because we know at one point before the attitude ever started, WWF at the time was kind of like the commercial thing. So was there like apprehensiveness on your side? Like, are we going to come over there? Are they going to water down the, the Dudley boys? Was that a conversation of when we get here, can we do what it is we like to do? Well, I think anybody that comes in from somewhere else back then was always under the impression that it might be watered down their character, their persona, and anything that they had done in other places. Was it a fear? Absolutely. Bubba first came. We had already been done with the stuttering, me smacking Bubba in the back of the head. And uh, the minute we came into WWE, that was the first thing Vince wanted us to do. He found that to be entertaining. He didn't want the Dudleys of the present at that time. He wanted the old school Dudleys with the Bubba stuttering and me smacking him in the back of the head. Bubba hated it. He didn't want to go back to that. Because after you go from that to being a hardcore Dudleys in ECW, it's hard to go back to the baby face stuttering, you know, Bubba Ray Dudley. He didn't like it. He hated it. And um, I remember the first time uh, we got the opportunity to work with the Hardys in the tables match. That was what really set everything for us at Madison Square Garden. And, I mean, it was a great time during that time. No one had really seen it on that level. You got to understand, ECW was seen by a lot of people, but their, their, their market was very small compared to the huge market that the WWF um, had and at that point in time if you think about it only one percent maybe two percent of the wwe fans knew who we were it wasn't until we became a name in wwf is when they decided they knew who we were but it was also at that point when it, when that tables match came we showed the company the dudley boys can do more than stuttering and me smacking bump in the back of the head Absolutely, absolutely. You got you got a question for me? Yeah, well, actually, you had brought up the tables match. I wanted to know how that formed, how that became your signature. Was it something natural that, or was it someone had an idea like, hey, you guys can bring tables? No, it, was, it was Vince's idea to put Terry Reynolds at first to a table. We had the table match with the Hardys at Madison Square Garden. I believe it was in 2000. And then on Monday Night Raw, he goes, you guys are going to, we're going to make your heels. And we're going to put uh, Terry through a table. In Philadelphia, and I remember me and Bubba looked at him and goes, "Vince, that's not gonna work." <laughs> Why is that? Well, Vince, uh, society is sick <laughs> right now, and number one, you're doing it in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is where the Dudley Boys were made, born, and raised. And to put a woman through a table, they're not gonna boo; they're gonna cheer. So, and he was like, "Oh, nonsense! Don't worry, it'll work." So when it didn't work and all those people started cheering, it was like, what can I do? How can, I, how can we prove the Dudley's wrong? <clears throat> I got it. We'll put an 80-year-old woman through a table. And again, we told them that's even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. That's going to make us instant baby faces because society at that time was sick. I mean, we knew it because of Austin. You know, Austin came in as a foul-mouthed, beer-drinking, you know, redneck that put up the middle finger and was against authority. So when society, you know, gravitated to Austin, we kind of saw the writing on the wall that if we were to even take Mae Young and put it through a table, there was not a chance in hell that people were going to boo. And I think if you go back and look at the tape, when I, we took out Mark Henry, he's down, and because we never told the commentators what we were going to do. Oh, and wow. Jerry, and that was sick. Mark right. Henry being with me. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there you go. And that was a whole other thing. Yeah. So and then what also happened was that day, you know, here it is. We got rid of Mark Henry. And then I remember watching it back. The minute I took Mae Young and I brought her over to Bubba, Jerry the King Lawler goes, they're not going to do what I think they're going to do. There's no way. Somebody's going to come. And at that point, when I read it, I was like, that's when I knew Jerry the King Lawler didn't know what we were going to do. Jerry the King Lawler and JR had no idea we were putting Mae Young through a table. <laughs> and so I remember the minute we got her, I got her up in midair, the fans, if you go back and watch, they stood up and started looking towards the ramp. They thought somebody was coming down to save her. And when I put her on Bubba's shoulders and Bubba stood up, and that crowd, it just went from a, oh, it was like a God earthly, noise, like a sound. And next thing you know, <laughs> he went through and that place exploded. I mean, they lost their mind. And that's when I realized that society was really sick. We took an 80 <laughs> year old woman who could be somebody's grandmother and put her through a table and you cheer. Who does that? <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta ask the question because you yeah. brought it. I gotta yeah. ask. 
So I've always wanted to ask this question. So you mentioned how the idea of putting Terry came about. That set it off as a first woman being put through a table from you guys, in, right? In WWF. Okay. Then you talk about Mae Young. I wanted to know, like, what was the craziest... Power bomb of a woman through a table for you, and and why? I was just curious because I was just wondering how how do you guys live putting these women through the tables? Well, and I, it was such a fire thing to do, but I'm still yeah. curious as a kid seeing all of this. I think the craziest one was Mae Young again mm. putting her through the table on this from the stage to the floor. Yeah, I mean she was one. I think Bubba liked to say it best. Mae Young was the toughest man we had ever been in a ring with. <laughs> I mean she was she was tough. She she came in the back. This was after the first that we wrestled her and, um, and Moolah. Um, and we saw what Jeff Jarrett used to do with them when he wrestled with them. Jeff would beat the hell out of them. But we were trying to be very, like, uh, soft with them. We were trying to take care of them, so to speak. And we were giving them the respect. And at the end of the match, Mae Young called us both over here, told Bubba, come here, hot shot. Shook his hands the next time. Next time you're in the ring with us, you treat us like one of the boys. And she slapped Bubba. And I was just like, gotcha. Yep. I stepped back. I said, gotcha. We'll, 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 hit, we'll hit you. Not a problem. You don't have to smack me. I'm good. <laughs> Insane. Yeah, so May Young, May Young was probably the toughest um, and most, it was the most unusual female to ever put through a table. I mean, because, again, it's an 80-year-old woman. You're on top of a, on top of the SmackDown um, stage, and the tables below. You take her and you go through it. Now most women, 80 years old plus, are worried about their hips, just right. falling. You're taking this woman and diving off of a of a stage <laughs> to a through a table, and that's not good. And then she came to us after that was over. She goes, "I want to talk to Vince and ask Vince if we can do a steel cage match where you take me, bring me onto the top, and put us through a table off the cage." What? I just remember looking at Bubba going, you're doing that one. <laughs> I ain't doing that one. If something, if something happens, they're going to blame the black guy. I ain't doing that one. <laughs> so what I, what I, my, my next two things I was going to say is, one, we were uh, you know, watching it as kids, seeing you put all them women to the table. <laughs> Before this interview, we go back and watch it, and we see that Terry was the only one that was kind of spared, spared. Because when Bubba's um, throwing her yeah. to the table... He like, you know what I mean, throws himself down and she kind of catches Protected it. it yeah. But then everybody after that. <laughs> Straight yeah. through. Straight through. And the worst one didn't even come from y'all. The worst one came from the good father. <laughs> yeah. 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 It looked like he broke her in half. I remember APA waiting for them at the end of the match, waiting for Godfather to come to the rope. He says, what did she do to you? <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? He was like, did she owe you money? He was like, good God, how much hatred did you have for that woman? <laughs> I mean, he literally killed her. But when Bubba did it to, to Terry, remember, it was the first time he had ever done that. Yeah. So it was like trial and error. So him putting it through. Now he watched it over and over again. And that's when he decided. He was like, I'm going to let them go through a little bit more. And that's what he did. And that's why everybody else from that point on, you saw them going that's through. True. I think Trish Stratus was probably the first victim of really going through hard. Yeah, and she was a trooper. She really was a trooper. I love Trish Stratus to death, even to this day. We I, talk about that. I thought the leader one was, was kind of mean Ooh, too. Yeah. Leader well, took I, I was gonna ask China. She, 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 yeah, she, she gave it. She yeah. gave it all. I was gonna ask: Is there one that sticks in your memory? Like we really just that power bomb was crazy. I, I think it, it would have to be Trish. I mean, if you see the, the velocity impact of her going through that table, good God, there was no protection whatsoever. None.